So here's my little board all connected up uh, for a demo. Uh, so it has the RS232 port at the back. I put four servos out of the six channels. That's all the extra servos I had on hand. I have a little receiver here, three channel one. So I hooked it up to the three of the channels. And for good measures, I put two pots to provide some analog input. So let's see what he can do. Uh, so you can do everything at the same time. Uh, first one, of course, is it can talk RS-232. Let's see what we can do here. We can type. And it comes out the other way. And of course, it talks to the computer back. So I have it echo but we stars to see that there is no, it's just not straight echo, there is some processing occurring in the microcontroller. So that I'll use to talk to the um, Robotech controllers over uh, RS-232. And of course it has servos, so I uh, here's the servo screen, they are all to no pulse, minus one is no pulse, and uh, let's change that, let's turn on the Sequencer. So you have a little sequencer. There's a real time clock here. It's a real three step, once a second sequencer. You can see the servos doing a little dance here, just for demonstration purposes. And you can see the numbers I feed through them now. That makes the servo move. And you know, the steps are 32 of a second. So you could be also much finer than this. And you can also at the same time as the sequencing read some analog input. So here is my pots. There is pot number one here. No, that's number two. It's in millivolts, so zero millivolts, two millivolts. The other one is the same thing, goes up to about five volts, not quite four nine nine five. And no, with two lines of codes, you can actually take that, measure it, and then turn it off to the uh, turn no pipe it to the servos so here we go we're in that mode and see if I can move a servo with that button now there we go right. it's not easy to hold that guy there we go so here's my first analog going to the servo the other one should work just as well here we go Okay, so that's not terribly exciting, of course, you know, the pots usually would be on, on something else, they would be controlling a position or uh, doing something more interesting. And then we also have the RC input screen, here are my six inputs, uh, so let's turn the uh, receiver on. So right now they have lots of signal, they don't see anything. And here we go, I have three channels on that receiver, so here are my three decoded pulse in uh, microseconds also. And if I move the stick, let's see which channel that is. Well, it's channel 1, right? 120 on one end, and 925 microsecond on the other end, and this channel 2, for example. And, <coughs> you know, of course you would do something with it, but for purpose of uh, demonstration, I can pipe those numbers to the servos. So now the numbers I have on the receiver are identical to the numbers I have on the servos. And make them dance a little bit. See what happens here. There you go. Yeah, servo 2 moving, servo 1. And the third channel is at the back of the transmitter right here. And do the other servo. So the, the beauty of this uh, compared to an Arduino is that no, all the processor is yours, all the interrupts are yours, so you can really have it exact, you know, do exactly what you want and uh, you know, do all those things at the same time so it, it can sequence, read stuff uh, on the analog and the RC uh, and then you have 90% uh, of the memory free to do something with it so I think it will be a good base for my uh, little R2D2 uh, R, no, 232 controller